Have you ever wondered what makes Irish DNA so different? What is the reality behind this unique genetic heritage? Ireland's genetic makeup reflects its unique position at Europe's western edge, a final destination for ancient migrations, and a refuge where older genetic patterns survived while being replaced elsewhere. The genetic differences between Irish people and even their nearest neighbours didn't happen by chance, but through specific historical events and geographical circumstances that moulded populations in different ways. These differences tell us much about human migration patterns, the power of geographical barriers, and how historical events leave permanent marks in our DNA. One of the most significant factors that made the Irish genetically distinct was the island's relative isolation after the Bronze Age. While neighbouring Britain, for example, experienced wave after wave of significant migrations and invasions, from Romans to Anglo-Saxons to Vikings to Normans, Ireland remained comparatively untouched by many of these population movements. This isolation created what geneticists call a bottleneck effect, where the existing genetic patterns became concentrated and preserved rather than diluted by newcomers. The result was that the Bronze Age genetic signature, particularly that distinctive R, 1B, L21, Y chromosome lineage, remained unusually pure in Ireland while being progressively diluted in neighbouring regions. Geographic isolation meant that Ireland's gene pool developed with minimal external input for centuries at a time. When new genetic contributions did arrive, they tended to be limited to coastal trading settlements rather than spreading widely throughout the population. This pattern of isolation and preservation makes the Irish gene pool valuable to genetic researchers, because it offers insights into what the prehistoric Western European genome looked like before the massive population shifts of the last 2,000 years. Recent genetic studies have revealed that this isolation had another effect. Regional genetic clustering within Ireland itself. Analysis of the Irish genome shows distinct genetic signatures associated with historical provinces like Munster, Connaught and Ulster, suggesting that not only did the Irish remain isolated from outside influences, but even within the island, populations often stayed put and intermarried locally for many generations. Perhaps one of the most genetically studied topics is the difference between the Irish and English gene pools, despite their geographical proximity. Nothing differentiates the genetic makeup of modern Irish from English people more than the massive Anglo-Saxon migrations that reshaped Britain starting in the 5th century AD. As Roman power collapsed in Britain, Germanic peoples from what is now northern Germany, the Netherlands and Denmark began settling in eastern and southern England. Recent genetic studies have revealed that this wasn't just a cultural overlay, it was a profound genetic replacement event. Some regions of eastern England show evidence that up to 40% of their genetic ancestry derives from these Anglo-Saxon settlers. The distinctive North Sea Germanic genetic signatures that characterise much of modern England's population are virtually absent in Ireland, which the Anglo-Saxons never reached in significant numbers. This genetic divergence created one of the sharpest distinctions between Irish and English populations. While the Irish continued to preserve their Bronze Age genetic heritage with minimal outside influence, the English population was being substantially remade through admixture with these continental Germanic peoples. The Anglo-Saxon genetic contribution diminishes as one moves westward across Britain, creating a gradient where Welsh and Scottish Highland populations show less of this influence, making them somewhat more similar to the Irish in this respect. The Anglo-Saxon genetic impact went beyond just adding new lineages. It also significantly altered the frequency of existing ones. The characteristic R1BL21 subclade that remained dominant in Ireland became progressively diluted in England, replaced by different R1B subclades associated with continental Germanic groups, as well as distinctly Germanic haplogroups like I1. The Viking era, roughly spanning the 9th to 11th centuries, left different genetic imprints across the British Isles. In parts of Scotland, particularly the Northern Isles of Orkney and Shetland, Norse genetic influence was profound. Studies suggest up to 40% of the male lineages in these areas derive from Scandinavian settlers. Similarly, areas of Northern and Eastern England, especially in Yorkshire and around the Danelaw territories, show substantial Norse genetic contributions. Ireland experienced Viking contact differently. While Vikings established important trading settlements at Dublin, Wexford, Waterford, Cork and Limerick, their genetic impact was more limited and localised. Recent studies suggest that Viking genetic contribution in Ireland rarely exceeds 5-6% to of the total genome, and is primarily concentrated in these coastal urban areas 
rather than penetrating deeply inland. This differential impact of Viking settlement created another layer of genetic distinction between the Irish and their neighbours. While Orkney Islanders and certain English regional populations carry substantial Norse genetic signatures, particularly Y-chromosome haplogroups I1 and specific R1A subclades associated with Scandinavia, these markers remain relatively uncommon in most Irish populations. The limited Viking genetic impact in Ireland helped preserve the island's distinctive Bronze Age genetic pattern, while portions of Scotland and England were absorbing significant Scandinavian genetic contributions. This differential history further reinforced the genetic divergence between populations that had already been developing since the Anglo-Saxon migrations. Though both Irish and Scottish Highlanders are often described as Celtic, or more specifically Gaelic populations, their genetic histories follow different paths. The traditional historical narrative describes early medieval Irish settlers, the Scotti, migrating to western Scotland, Dalriada, around the 5th to 6th centuries AD, bringing Gaelic language and culture. While this migration certainly occurred, genetic evidence reveals a more complex picture. Scottish populations, even in the Highlands, show genetic influences absent in Ireland. The Picts, who dominated eastern and northern Scotland before being culturally absorbed by the Gaelic kingdoms, contributed distinctive genetic elements to the Scottish gene pool. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, the much heavier Norse settlement in Scotland, particularly in the North and the Western Isles, added another layer of genetic distinction between Scottish and Irish populations. This created a situation where two culturally similar Celtic populations, both speaking Gaelic languages and sharing many cultural traditions, nevertheless developed somewhat different genetic profiles. The distinction illustrates how cultural identity and genetic ancestry don't always align perfectly, as populations can adopt cultural practices without wholesale population replacement. Another significant difference in the genetic histories of Ireland and its neighbours involves the Roman Empire. Britain was under Roman rule for nearly four centuries, 43 to 410 AD, bringing not just Roman administration but also people from across the empire. Recent genetic studies have detected small but measurable genetic contributions from Mediterranean populations in English and Welsh DNA, likely dating to this Roman period. These genetic signatures, including Y-chromosome haplogroups E1b1b and J2, which are more common in Mediterranean populations, are part of Britain's genetic landscape, but are notably less frequent in Ireland. The absence of Roman rule in Ireland, the Empire never conquered the island, meant that this layer of genetic influence that affected Britain simply bypassed Ireland. As mentioned earlier very briefly, when geneticists look at what makes Irish DNA most distinctive from neighbouring populations, one particular genetic marker stands out. A specific subclade of the R1BY chromosome haplogroup, known as R1BL21, sometimes called S145. This genetic lineage, often nicknamed the Atlantic Celtic marker, reaches its highest worldwide frequency in Western Ireland where it can account for over 80% of all male lineages in some counties. While R1BL21 is also found in Western Britain, particularly Wales and Scotland, its frequency and the purity of its specific downstream subclades remain uniquely concentrated in Ireland. The prevalence of this single Y chromosome branch is perhaps the single strongest genetic feature distinguishing Irish men from their neighbours. What makes this genetic signature particularly interesting is its age, it likely arrived in Ireland around 4,000 years ago with the Bronze Age Bell Beaker migrations, yet has remained the dominant paternal lineage ever since. This remarkable continuity in the male lineage, with relatively little dilution from subsequent migrations, testifies to Ireland's unique position as a genetic time capsule, preserving ancient European DNA patterns. The regional distribution of R1B L21 subclades within Ireland also reveals fascinating patterns, with specific variants concentrated in traditional territories of major Irish clans. This has allowed genetic genealogists to connect specific genetic signatures to historical families, revealing biological evidence for the surprising accuracy of some of Ireland's ancient genealogical traditions. The Norman conquest of 1066 transformed England's political landscape and also left a genetic imprint, particularly among the aristocratic classes. While the overall genetic contribution of Norman settlers to the English population was modest, it represents another layer of genetic input that affected England differently than Ireland. Norman influence eventually reached Ireland in the late 12th century, 
But the nature of Norman settlement in Ireland differed from England. Rather than the wholesale replacement of the elite that occurred in England after 1066, Norman settlement in Ireland was more piecemeal and regionally limited. Many Norman families in Ireland ultimately assimilated into Gaelic culture, becoming more Irish than the Irish themselves, as the saying went. The Great Famine of 1845 to 1852 represents one of the most devastating demographic catastrophes in European history, with Ireland's population falling by about 25% through a combination of starvation, disease and emigration. Many blame the British policies of depriving the Irish people of their fundamental rights for this horrible event. While this disaster had profound cultural and demographic effects, its impact on Ireland's genetic landscape was complex. Contrary to what might be expected, the famine didn't fundamentally alter the composition of the Irish gene pool through the introduction of new genetic material. Instead, it primarily affected the distribution of existing Irish genetic patterns. The mass emigration it triggered, with millions of Irish people relocating to North America, Australia, effectively exported Irish genetic signatures around the globe, rather than replacing them within Ireland itself. However, the famine did create subtle shifts in the frequency of certain genetic variants. Some research suggests that genetic variants associated with resistance to diseases like tuberculosis and cholera, which accompanied the famine, may have been selected for during this period, slightly increasing their frequency in the surviving population. The famine also accelerated emigration from certain regions more than others, potentially affecting regional genetic patterns within Ireland. Areas of Western Ireland that suffered the most severe population losses saw some of their distinctive genetic signatures transported en masse to places like Boston, New York and Sydney, creating diaspora communities where these genetic patterns remain detectable today. The prevalence of RH negative blood types among Irish populations represents another fascinating chapter in Ireland's distinctive genetic story. While the RH factor is present in approximately 85% of the global population, the absence of this protein, resulting in RH negative blood, occurs at notably higher rates in Ireland than in many other regions of the world. This elevated frequency of RH negative blood types, particularly the O negative and A negative phenotypes, adds another layer to Ireland's genetic uniqueness. Among ethnic Irish populations, studies have found that roughly 16 to 19 percent are RH negative, compared to the global average of about 15 percent. While this difference might seem modest, it's part of a broader pattern of higher RH negative frequencies found along Europe's Atlantic fringe, with the highest concentrations appearing among Basque populations in northern Spain and southwestern France, where rates can reach 25 to 30 percent. This distribution pattern is particularly intriguing to geneticists because it correlates with other genetic markers that suggest shared ancestry between these Atlantic coastal populations. The higher prevalence of RH negative blood types in Ireland appears to be connected to the same ancient population movements that established the dominance of the R1BL21 Y chromosome haplogroup, those Bronze Age migrations that so profoundly shaped Irish genetics. The blood type distribution in Ireland shows regional patterns as well, with some studies suggesting higher concentrations of RH negative types in western counties, the same areas where other distinctive Irish genetic markers reach their highest frequencies. This geographical distribution reinforces the theory that Ireland's western regions represent genetic refugia, where ancient genetic signatures have been preserved with less dilution from subsequent migrations. From a genetic perspective, the persistence of RH negative blood types at relatively high frequencies remains something of a puzzle. The RH factor can create complications during pregnancy when an RH negative mother carries an RH positive fetus, potentially leading to hemolytic disease of the newborn in subsequent pregnancies if not medically managed. This reproductive challenge would typically create selective pressure against RH negative blood types, yet they persist at substantial rates in Irish and other Atlantic European populations. Some researchers have proposed that the RH negative blood type might confer certain advantages that counterbalance these reproductive challenges, such as resistance to specific parasites or pathogens that were historically prevalent in these regions. Others suggest it might be the result of genetic drift in relatively isolated populations rather than direct selection. The historical isolation of Ireland likely contributed to preserving this blood type distribution. Just as with other genetic markers, the Irish Sea served as a barrier that reduced the influx of new genetic material that might have diluted the frequency of RH-negative types. 
The same historical factors that preserved other distinctive Irish genetic patterns, limited Roman influence, reduced Anglo-Saxon genetic contribution, and modest Viking impact, likely helped maintain the elevated RH negative frequencies as well. As with other aspects of Irish genetics, the story of RH negative blood types illustrates how geography, history, and chance have combined to create a population with distinctive genetic characteristics, another testament to how the narrow Irish Sea served as a powerful filter throughout human history.